Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained. Tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning 30 years, Rahman Music Sheets. My dream was to sing along with Lata Ji and I. That also came true with uh, Luka Chupi. So the son's voice became A.R. Rahman and the mother was none other than uh, Lata Didi. And then she said, can I rehearse it? And she refused to sit down on the chair for the next eight or ten hours. She was standing till the song was over. Starting his professional life as a salesman of vacuum cleaners, Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra entered the world of media, making advertising films, music videos and then, in 2001, his first feature film, Ax. Five years later, came Rang De Basanti. In 2006, it was released on 26th January, the Republic Day of India. In an industry where a bound script was yet to become a practice, Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra did something that was unheard of, at least in the world of Hindi films. I heard the film before I shot it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it, it was a sweet accident of destiny. We were supposed to start shooting in uh, I, early January and I got a bout of uh, jaundice, so the shoot had to be pushed. So, now we had all the dates from the artist and everything, so I said, hey guys, let's just hold a workshop till I can stand on my feet. So, wearing my dark glasses because jaundice gives you all those yellow eyes and all that. It was possible for me to be in Mehboob studio in, a, in the recording studio, the famous, the historical recording studio, which was shut down. So, we opened it, there was no recording instrument, but it was sound intelligent. It had been built by the great Mehboob Khan himself. And there's a huge history in that room. Some greatest of the songs have been created there and background music by Naushad, by Madan Mohan, you know, by Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi ji, Pyarelal ji, by, it's, it's by Lata ji has sung there, Mohammad Rafi, the greats of our time. And, you know, imagine Mother India has been scored, scored there. So, day one, we just read our lines. Day two started getting better at it. The entire crew was there, the entire cast was there because their dates were there and they were all very happy to come. Day three, day four, I took the back seat and let them just go through their lines and as such. And uh, the brilliant sound designer, Nakul Kamte, I have to give it to him. In the meantime, he kept recording everything and whatever he felt was okay uh, at the end of these six seven days uh, he just gave it to me and he said hear this hear your film see what you've done i heard it and i took the next flight to chennai and i played it to air i said this is how it's kind of turning out you know uh, and he took it to the next level. He played the soundtrack and he started composing. And in those 13 days, we had the skeleton of all the songs. No lyrics, nothing. And background music. Now when I was shooting the film, the music was already playing in my ears. A product of Delhi's Air Force Bal Bharti School, Rakesh aspired to join the Indian Air Force. Ironically, Rangde Basanti at its core had MiG-21 fighter aircraft that were crashing and bursting into balls of fire. Media had dubbed them as the widow maker. There's a situation where Vahida ji gets the Indian flag of Madhavan who has lost his life in a MiG aircraft crash and uh, it's his funeral ceremony. And yeah, it's a painful situation. And what does AR do? He, 
he says, Mr. Mehra, you know, it reminds me of, where are you, my blue-eyed boy? I said, um, and said, yeah, it feels like that. Uh, it, it feels much more than a funeral ceremony. Uh, it's, 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 it's a mother who has lost her son and is looking for a son. And a son is singing back to her. So the son's voice became A.R. Rahman. And the mother was none other than uh, Lata Didi. And uh, he composed the song, he did the sargam. Uh, then we did the lyrics on that. And then Lata Ji came and uh, it's a do it. And she rehearsed the song. That is the, mo uh, the, the greatness of Lata Ji. She called me up and she said, Beta, I can Chennai ja ke record kar sakti. I said, no, he said that he will come to Bombay. Why are you taking your pain? She said, no, he will go to his space. So, and that's her thing. And that's how humble she was. And she went three days before that. And from the airport, she said, no, she went three days before that. And from the airport, she said, no, she went to the studio. I said, you go to the hotel and go to the We went to the studio and A.R. A received her and straight away, let's hear the composition. She heard the composition. We all know what the song became. And then she said, can I rehearse it? Can you give it to me on a cassette? You know, she belonged to a generation where you would hear it on a cassette player. <laughs> Yeah, you know, a Walkman. So, uh, three days in a hotel room, she would go back and forth, all that. And on the fourth day, when she came for the final recording, we had arranged a mic for her like this. And uh, there were some flowers, a bottle of hot water and glass. So, she came and said, Why mic is so low? Why do you put it up a little bit? We said, no, but you know, you can sit and record. He said, no, I can sing and sing and sing and sing and sing. And then she started singing and jamming with A.R. And because A.R. was doing the sargam, so he was singing along from the inside room. And he was adding his own lyrics because it's a give and take song. You know, you just can't have one artist perform and the other not perform. And she refused to sit down on the chair for the next eight or ten hours. She was standing till the song was over. This is very nice. And in the age of digital recording, uh, where quite often if something goes off beat or you want to stress a word, or you want to sing it slightly differently, you punch it in. Because digitally you can do now, be non-linear. But she insisted she would sing the whole paragraph again. Not just that one word or one line. She would sing all the four lines or six lines again. And uh, for me, I was standing in between greatness on both sides of me. And, and just uh, wondering like a child in Disney World. lost Lataji recently. As someone who worked with her, how do you take this? And has she actually gone? I mean, where has Lata Mangeshwar gone? She's gone nowhere. She was there with us before I was born. So she was in my past. She was all through in my present, she'll always be in my future. I will be dusted and gone and she'll still be there. That, 
Lata Mangeshkar lives forever. Uh, she will never be gone. So, uh, it makes you believe uh, in things like immortality. Yes, uh, some last rites have been performed as per the rules of the society for a body. But to confine her to a physical form will be... Uh, I don't think so we can do that. I, I, I don't know whether it is that. It cannot be. There was Lata Mangeshkar in our life. We didn't get up in the morning and have breakfast together. But she was still such a huge part of her life. And she'll remain that. So, where has she gone? Nowhere. In fact, she is more part of us now than she was ever. Coming back to Loka Chippi, why do you think it became such an iconic song? You know, it's uh, there are songs and then there are songs. This song was an experience which was after life. And the male voice, which is AR's, belongs to uh, Madhavan who is no more. Whose only his presence or his soul is what we can feel. It's not somebody lip syncing it. So, how do you give a voice to that? All you can give is your feelings. Rakesh Ji, a song for funeral ceremony became a song of liberation. A conversation between a mother and her dead son. It took this shape because of Rahman's own relationship with his mother or did it have something to do with you as well? I believe in her last days, your mother was suffering and you asked doctors to pull the ventilator's plug uh, out uh, and liberate her of her sufferings. Did your relationship with your mom also contributed to Luka Chupi? Um, <coughs> uh, we are all very uh, close to our mothers and uh, they, they are always there for us. They never leave us. Uh, and uh, uh, so to feel uh, that you are talking to your mother through this song in itself uh, that cleanses you and that cleanses the entire process that 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 you're, 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 you're there in a very pure a very white environment and it's it's a very glowing environment and it's uh, you are uh, not even there you are invisible as if you've been you know con consumed by that whiteness um most certainly uh, uh, AR brought his own feelings in, most certainly. Luka Chibi was also long listed for Oscars yeah. as best original song. Do you think it deserved to win? Oh, uh, and why not? I, 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 I think uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a piece of work, it's a piece of contribution to the world of music <coughs> which uh, uh, deserves everything it, it, uh, and more than the Oscar is, is the love of the uh, the listener how it entered the soul and I can't tell you how many people I meet even today across the world and for them uh, Luka Chupi and Raina Tu is, is a song where they go to in the moment of when they need that uh, spiritual support when life is beating them down or they are sad or they have lost some, something or someone and just to stand up back on their feet and that's what AR has given them Rangde Basanti swept all the major awards that year. 
The story of its music continues in our next episode with Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. A.R. Rahman will also join us. Stay with us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained.